what's up guys today is another tutorials which is obviously pronounced tutorials tutorials yeah is a 360 platformer tutorial how do you make them it's pretty simple let's get right into it yeah so first we're gonna name our project 360 platformer you don't have to obviously if you knew that good for you if you didn't like if you thought the the, the like the project name mattered you learned it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, just name it whatever you want. Now go to events, get a one green flag is clicked, and then let's get a broadcast. Let's broadcast. Uh, you know what? Let's set it to like a setup. So it'll set up the basic needs. And then when I receive a setup, okay, let's first go ahead and create a block, and then let's name it set size two. This is the size hack sort of thing, where we've used it a bunch of times already. Uh, this can make your sprite go oversized. Even though Scratch will try to block it, they can't because they have uh, this hole in their system. And we can use that, so this could work. But who knows, uh, Scratch might fix this, but this is a very good feature, so I hope they don't fix it, because like... This is super useful. Anyways, that doesn't matter right now. What we gotta do is we can delete the cat and then just put a simple dot in the middle and then we can name it a dot because it's a dot. You can see, we, could, we name it dot because it's a dot. You know, that makes so much sense. And then let's create another one. Let's name it level. For a 360 platformer, it's best to have just one level in a single circle because that's how it is and then that's how i use it how i use it but you know it's your choice i'm gonna make it like a moon style i'm actually creating a 360 platformer game right now which is pretty cool yeah let's make it like this big for now it's better if it's big actually so let's actually make it bigger but it has to fit in the scene, so not too big. And this is actually going to do the job. And then let's quickly just create a square like that. Make it so it'll go to the back layer. And then make it so it's a reasonable size. Sort of like so. Now, that looks pretty nice. And definitely, we will need more of that. So, let's duplicate that. And then do that. Duplicate that. Do that. Now it'll be a lot easier to tell if it's actually spinning, spinning or not, because it has some difference in it. And then, I think you guys know what to do with that define. It's just that you have to switch your costume to the dot, set your size to the size, and then switch your costume back to the level. And then, we, we need a few more codes in the setup. Uh, you could do go to x of 0 and y of your choice. If you did your size 500, I recommend 500, but... You know, it's still your choice. And then let's uh, point in direction 90. Obviously, you could start in a different direction because, you know. But this is the uh, default direction. And then it looks like the spread is a little big, so let's make the Y position a little lower. In this case, I'm going to make it negative 600, and let's see how that looks on it. Obviously, it doesn't look like it's enough, so negative 800 will be yep i think that's good right and i think i want to rotate a little bit so that wouldn't be in the middle because player is supposed to stay like start there and i think um okay five more degrees that looks a lot better now what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna actually code our player first but before that let's name this level so, yeah, now that we've got our level, let's create another new sprite, and then let's name that player. Now, I'm gonna make the player go red. So, something like that, and then that is a little big, so let's size that down until it looks sort of like that, and it's the size is reasonable. And then, uh, the player has like one code, or two actually, when green flag is clicked. Go to the spot you want, which in my case is at 0 and negative 10. See, uh, no, negative 20 and negative 40. And that looks reasonable. 
but actually a little higher is better. And then now let's go to the level and uh, we could go to the forever loop. And uh, we need two variables actually, and then both are used very commonly. And that is the rotational velocity for this sprite only. And then let's get rid of that my variable. And then y velocity for this sprite only. Pretty cool, pretty nice. Let's hide both of that because we do not need it to show. And then let's change our y velocity by 1. Let's go to control, get an if statement. Go to sensing, get a if key pressed. And then let's do if key right arrow is pressed and key left arrow is pressed. Now what you're going to do is go to variables, get a change, and then we're going to change our rotational velocity. When right arrow is pressed, change it by negative 0.2. Obviously you could change that, but in my case, this is a, a perfect value, I think. And then uh, to make it slow down, it's not going to slow down like this because you don't like shrink it automatically, you know. Now let's set uh, rotational velocity to rotational velocity times 0 0.8 or something like that. Or maybe 0 0.82. Yes, I think that's going to be a lot better. And then let's go to motion, get a turn clockwise. And then let's turn a uh, rotational velocity amount. Now we should start see it uh, spinning like crazy. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is to edit that because I definitely got it wrong. It's not change it by, but we have to set it to. Oh, yes. And then before we do, uh, let's set our rotational velocity and our y velocity to zero at the setup. So it wouldn't go crazy. Now you see it moving in a reasonable speed. Now that looks pretty good, so let's move on. Uh, we could go to control now, get a if touching player. Uh, there you go. We could change our y by negative one. And then we're going to repeat that few more times so we could do that and then we could duplicate one last time only one of them and then change it to change y by four and then turn clockwise uh, go to operators get a multiply and then get a uh, rotational velocity times negative one so there you go and then let's set rotational velocity to zero basically what this is doing is this is gonna detect the slopes and then like stop you there okay that's what it's gonna do and then now what you're gonna do is go to motion get a change y by and then change y by your y velocity and then go to control get a if statement and then if go to sensing get a touching player so if it's touching the player then change our y velocity by y velocity times a negative one. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your y velocity to zero after that. Now you're gonna go to the motion, you gotta change y by, so change y by one. And then go to control, get an if statement, and then if touching the player, so like that if touching the player and then if arrow key is pressed to so if key up arrow or in this case i'm let me just do space or maybe just do up arrow whatever uh we're gonna set our y velocity to a negative like 12 15 to negative jump amount of what you want let's go to motion like so it's like less the value is it's like the uh, higher it jumps because uh, what's gonna happen is the the circle thing is gonna retract to the ground not the not the circle itself like the circles gonna stay at the same exact position every time it's just a, a circle just rotating and moving down or not. That it might look like that the 
circle is actually moving, but the actual case is that the circle is at the same spot. It's just an obstacle illusion if you see it moving. It's just because other things are moving and then like it looks like it's moving but yeah that's how it works and then that looks pretty cool pretty nice it looks very very finished uh i think that's gonna be it for today and uh, i'm gonna be back with a lot of other cool tutorials but if you have suggestions please leave it in the comments below since that will help me help me out a lot so, thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next episode of Epic Tutorials of Scratch. Peace.